All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session, and let's, let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord our God, you called your people to be your church. As they gather together in your name, may they love, honor, and follow your Son to eternal life in the kingdom he promised. Let their worship always be sincere, and help them to find your saving love in the church and its sacraments. Fill with the Spirit of Christ those whom you call to live in the midst of the world and its concern. Help them by their work on earth to build up your eternal kingdom. May they be effective witnesses to the truth of the gospel and make your church a living presence in the midst of the world. Increase the gifts you have given your church, that your faithful people may continue to grow in holiness and in imitation of your beloved Son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right. As said before, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this session. So, Tonight we want to take a specific look at the roles of the clergy and the roles of the laity in the Catholic Church. It is so important for us to take the time to define our call within the Church so that we may know how to proceed. What is it that Christ truly calls us to? The primary document that we will use to establish these roles in these definitions within the Catholic Church is the Vatican II document, Lumen Gentium. Along the way, I will use some of this, the beautiful language that was written in this document to help establish really the depth of our call, especially as the laity. So often, the call and the vocation of the laity within the Church is very confusing. And we're really, we're not sure how we're supposed to proceed. We're not sure what we're supposed to do as lay people. You know, what is our call? What does the church, what does Jesus ask of us? So what we see happening amongst Catholics is a great rise of apathy. Not because people don't care, but because people are unsure of what their call is as the lay people, servants of God. There's a, a lack of understanding there, and my hope is that we can clarify that tonight. Before we begin to establish the roles of the clergy and roles of the laity, it is important to discuss our universal call to holiness. All members of the Catholic Church are first and foremost called to holiness. In the sacrament of baptism, the call of priest, prophet, and king is placed upon each and every one of us. We are made for heaven. Jesus calls each of us by name and asks us to live a life of holiness so that we may live in eternity with him forever. This is our call to sainthood, and it is truly universal. Sainthood is not only for bishops, it is not only for priests. We have to understand that sainthood is a universal call, and it is for us. It is our call. Lumen Gentium expresses this truth in a beautiful way by saying the following. It says, these people follow the poor Christ, the humble and cross-bearing Christ, in order to be worthy of being sharers in his glory. Every person must walk unhesitatingly according to his own personal gifts and duties in the path of living faith, which arouses hope and works through charity. So immediately, almost right away, we as the laity 
are confronted with great purpose and great responsibility, right? Jesus Christ calls out to us specifically tonight and asks us to contribute to the church. So, so before we enter in any more, take a moment now for self-reflection. And how are you personally giving of your time and talents to the church right now? What are you currently doing? So, so think of that. You know, maybe, maybe you're a reader at Mass. Maybe you're an extra, extraordinary minister of the Eucharist, um, an usher. Maybe you're involved with another parish group that does service or other things uh, you know, in, in, for the church and in regards to the church, maybe the, the food pantry, um, the, the faith formation, for, there are just a multitude of ways. So what are you doing to serve right now? And I then want you to go back and reflect upon this past week, this past month, Look back and, and, and generally reflect upon how your time was spent. Reflect upon this giving of your time and talents to the church. How often was it taking place? When was it taking place? Where was it taking place? Because one important thing we need to remember, brothers and sisters, is our planner, our schedule where we spend our time is almost an instant gauge of where our priorities are. Are we living out that universal call to holiness? Are we living out that universal call to holiness? Okay. So now we'll move forward and begin to understand the hierarchy of the church and how the laity, us, are called to participate in the life of the church and work with our bishops and priests for the salvation of the world. So we'll begin by looking at the Pope and our bishops. As we may already know, our Holy Father Pope Francis is the direct descendant of St. Peter the Apostle. The Pope sits in the chair of St. Peter as Bishop of Rome and is the shepherd of the worldwide Roman Catholic Church. In this position, our Pope has the power and authority to establish dogma, which is official Catholic Church teaching that cannot be argued or opposed. Now, it's important to say that this teaching must be formally announced by the Holy Father and must be presented from the chair, ex cathedra. So there's a very specific way, you know, to present these teachings. Now this type of teaching does not take place too often, and we must not confuse it with comments from the Holy Father made in other places, you know, um, discussing certain things. That, those are not dogmas being laid out by the Holy Father. Uh, using his authority, his ex cathedra authority. So just to clarify, that's an important, an important clarification to make. So as we look to scripture, in scripture, we see Christ establishing Peter as the rock, giving the keys of the church to him and giving him the power to bind and to loose. Now Jesus transmits this same power to the Pope and also to the Apostles through what we call apostolic succession. Through apostolic succession, the power that Christ transmitted is handed down through the ages and is still present with our Pope and bishops today. The Holy Father's primary concern in his position, is to really maintain the universality of the Catholic Church. And Lumen Gentium states, it states this, 
and in order that the episcopate itself might be one and undivided, he placed blessed Peter over the apostles and instituted in him a permanent and visible source and foundation of unity of faith and communion. So unity of faith and communion, crucial role of the Holy Father. Keeping this unity strong amongst all Catholics must always be the Pope's central goal and mission. This unity is primarily achieved in our celebration of the Holy Sacraments, specifically the unity we find in the Holy Eucharist. The universality of the Holy Mass is what binds us together as people of faith. A dear friend of mine who lives uh, in Ohio, one of her favorite expressions is, I will see you in the Eucharist. This beautiful expression speaks volumes about the importance of the Eucharist in our lives and in the life of the church. Because even when we are apart, the Eucharist binds us together, it unifies us, it unites us. Now, as I mentioned before, all of our bishops are descendants of the original apostles. Each bishop is assigned by the Holy Father to a specific area which we call a diocese. This is the specific flock that the bishop is called to safeguard and uplift and protect. Bishop, bishops, in an eminent and visible way, sustain the roles of Christ himself as teacher, shepherd, and high priest, and that they act in his person. So another primary role of the bishop is to be a powerful proclaimer of the gospel. It is their call to go out and preach the gospel to all nations. An essential part of this preaching is that they safeguard and lead in matters of faith and morals. Our bishops are given the authority to judge on these issues of faith and morals in order to guide the people of their diocese and also the people of the world, the universal church. And again, brothers and sisters, we return to the source and summit of our faith, the Holy Eucharist. Above all things, it is the bishop's responsibility to regulate and safeguard the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. This is so, so important. And that is where we see the importance of the fatherly role of the bishop come into play. It's essential that he forms his priests and continues to shepherd them after their ordination. This spiritual fatherhood explains to us the relationship between our priests and our bishops. This paternal role of the bishop then extends down to the laity as well through the ministry of the priest. And Lumian Gentium says, let priests sincerely look upon the bishop as their father and reverently obey him. And let the bishop regard his priests as his co-workers and his sons and friends, just as Christ called his disciples, now not servants, but friends. This leads us into our discussion on the priesthood. Our parish priests represent for us the voice and face of the church. And so it is imperative that they are in full obedience and cooperation with their bishop. That unity needs to be tangible. The bishop extends his power onto his priests through the sacrament of holy orders. As a united clergy, they commit themselves to a life of service to the people of God. It is also crucial that they find unity and fellowship with one another so that they may become stronger in their ministry. The following expression of the relationship between priest and bishop 
is very helpful here in our conversation. Lumen Gentium states, priests who resemble bishops to a certain degree in their particip participation of the sacrament of orders form the spiritual crown of the bishops. They participate in the grace of their office and they should grow daily in their love of God and their neighbor by the exercise of their office through Christ, the eternal and unique mediator. At a lower level of the hierarchy, we find our deacons, okay? And Lumen Gentium has this to say about our deacons. It is the duty of the deacon according as it shall have been assigned to him by the competent authority to administer baptism solemnly, to be custodian and dispenser of the Eucharist, to assist at and bless marriages in the name of the church, to bring viaticum to the dying, to read the sacred scripture to the faithful, to instruct and exhort the people, to preside over the worship and prayer of the faithful, to administer sacramentals, to officiate at funeral and burial services. So that in a, nuts a nutshell explain explains for us the role of the deacon. It is truly a role of servant to the priest and to the bishop. And of course, um, they are not given the authority or the consecration to um, say mass and consecrate the Eucharist. That only the priest and bishop can do. Um, but the deacon has an entirely different role, a role that is focused solely upon servitude and upon the Gospels. Because if we look into the history of the diaconate, that was one of the primary reasons the apostles formed the diaconate. You know, to the, the deacons were supposed to be keepers of the gospel, you know, keepers and just full of knowledge when it came to the gospels. So the deacon, like the priest, vows a life of service to the community of believers, laity, us. Are you seeing a theme here, right? At the same time, their ministry is very different. For they, in a special way, vow to serve the gospel and be proclaimers of it like no other. And so what we see, bishops, priests, deacons, what we see here, bishops, therefore with their helpers, the priests and deacons, have taken up the service of the community, laity, presiding in place of God over the flock, whose shepherds they are as teachers for doctrine, priests for sacred worship, and ministers for governing. So all of this, all, you know, of, of this hierarchy we've gone through, we need to realize the language of Lumen Gentium, it points all of these roles to the laity service of servants of the people of God, bishops, priests, deacons. That is their primary role, servants of the people of God. We are the people of God. And so they pledge their lives in servitude to building up of the church. And Lumen Gentium it just says, says it wonderfully. When they start to talk about the role of the laity and they get into the laity, Lumen Gentium lays it out and basically says, everything, everything that has been said above concerning the people of God is intended for the laity, religious and clergy alike. But, but, there are certain things which pertain in a special way to the laity, and here we go, we're getting into our role now. Both men and women, by reason of their condition and mission. So this is where Lumen Gentium shifts focus, and we shift 
into a discussion on our personal role. So we need to realize that the clergy that we've been discussing, bishops, priests, and deacons, we don't call that the hierarchy of the church because they are put there to impose harsh and dominant rule upon us. Quite the opposite, because that's not how Christ led the church. They have all been chosen by God and placed in their positions for one sole purpose, to serve the people of God, the laity, us. And I enter into our role as the laity with an excerpt from Lumen Gentium. Really take this in and let it inspire you. This is probably, this is one of my favorite quotes from Lumen Gentium, specifically in regards to the laity. And it says this, They live in the world, the laity, that is, in each and in all of the secular professions and occupations. They live in the ordinary circumstances of family and social life from which the very web of their existence is woven. They are called there by God that by exercising their proper function and led by the spirit of the gospel, they may work for the sanctification of the world from within as leaven. In this way, they may make Christ known to others, especially by the testimony of a life resplendent in faith, hope, and charity. Therefore, since they are tightly bound up in all types of temporal affairs, it is their special task to order and to throw light upon these affairs in such a way that they may come into being and then continually increase according to Christ to the praise of the Creator and the Redeemer. What a blessing, brothers and sisters, and privilege it is to be a member of the laity. Those of us daily working in the vineyard of the Lord, glorifying Him in the seemingly mundane day-to-day tasks that we take part in. In these small things, and I, this is my favorite line, in, this, in the small things, we become that leaven that the council speaks of. And we, quote, consecrate the world itself to God, unquote. Consecrate the world itself to God. This means that our work suddenly takes on a spiritual component and bears within it salvific value. The very Christ who plied his hands with carpenter's tools and who in union with his Father is continually working for the salvation of all men. In this, then, their daily work They should climb to the heights of holiness and apostolic activity. Wait, our daily grind, our daily work. So how we approach our work matters. With it, we can choose to shine a bright light into the darkness of the world or to simply contribute to the darkness that already exists. So as we speak of the laity, it's also important we can't forget, right? It is also an important element for the laity to remain in humble obedience to our spiritual shepherds. Not because they know more than we do, right? But simply because through their ordination, the sacrament of holy orders, they have been marked in a special way and the Holy Spirit remains with them and guides them in the matters of the faith. They lead us 
so that we may all remain one in Christ. Christ speaks through the Pope and bishops directly to us, the laity. Okay, so our obedience is again, just as the priest is obedient to the bishop, we are called to be obedient to the clergy to bring about a greater unity in the universal church. So within the role and call of the laity, it is important to also mention those who have given their lives to Christ in a special way by becoming a religious brother or sister, fully consecrated to Jesus. And, and we speak of them now, not, we didn't speak of them before the laity. We speak of them now because in the hierarchy of the church, they are in no way above the laity. They have simply been called to a different state in life. And like lay married or single, single people are called to be that leaven in the world, simply in a consecrated state. And Lumen Gentium says this in regards to religious brothers and sisters. They say, from the point of view of the divine and hierarchical structure of the church, the religious state of life is not an intermediate state between clerical and lay states, but rather the faithful of Christ are called by God from both these states of life so that they might enjoy this particular gift in the life of the church and thus each in one's own way may be of some advantage to the salvific mission of the church. And the final point I will make from Lumen Gentium is that our universal call to holiness, right, is truly expressed in this short phrase from Lumen Gentium. And it says, Christians must be to the world what the soul is to the body. Christians must be to the world what the soul is to the body. We are called to bring spiritual life into the world. We are called to be leaven so that all may rise and see the one God face to face. You're called to be leaven. And now is the acceptable time, brothers and sisters. Let us close in prayer and let us offer this time and let us offer the rest of our days and let us ask for our dearest Mother Mary's intercession. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dearest Mother Mary, Queen of the Universal Church, keep us always united. Keep us always close to your Son, Jesus. Let us run to the Eucharist, the source of our strength and our unity. We ask for your prayers, Blessed Mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Uh, I will, now, now we can bounce back and forth, and I will be happy to take questions so we can further understand and discuss what was talked about tonight.